Hi, I'm Dan from Isotonic Studios and this is the third video in our series introducing the Follow device, a Max for Live device that creates automatic follow actions based on various trigger types and gives you the ability to set and forget or interact with during your performance. And that's what this video is focused on. We're going to be using the Push 2 and showing you how the display updates to give you an understanding of, of what you're in control of and what's going to happen next. And we're going to use uh, a Novation Launch Control just to show you how as you play through your set, you're given multiple options of where your set might go next. So let's plug the controllers in and let's get down to it. Okay, so we've got our following scene device on track number one. Uh, that's where we've placed all our clip, uh, click clips effectively, the ones that we're gonna use to trigger the follow actions. And we're gonna look first at how the device shows up on the push two. So let's go to device mode, here we go. So we're back to the start. Select follow scene, it's effectively the, the third thing there. And I'm gonna dive a bit deeper because I want to see one of the new features of Live 10, and that's a Max for Live device that actually has a name of a bank. And we've got Follow Action and Q Next. <coughs> and in addition, one of the new elements being Live Banks, and if you're a Max for Live program, you've probably de delved into this already, is the ability to have a contextual menu. So as we move through our trigger types, when we get to bypass looping, we can actually pull forwards the order of the parameter so that we can display the number of plays. And we can control that from there. And the same is the case for the time. So we can actually build a display that, that dynamically changes itself to the choices that have been made. The same uh, for the follow action. So we've got again, which is loop. We've got previous, which pays the one above. We've got next, which pays the one below, the most popular. First, that plays the first clip in the block, triggering uh, that scene, and perhaps last, doing the same, but the opposite way round. You've got any, and of course, that has a choice to include or exclude the current clip. And then we have name, so you can actually choose the name of the the scene effectively that you want to be able to trigger. And we also have Q next where you can basically leave the transport running or have it set to Q. And the same with the, the clips. Do you want them to Q or do you want them to continue playing? Finally, we have on the fly control of the trigger time, just in case you need to change it in your set and you're just diving on the, on the push. Q next realistically now has the names as you can see as it's updated on the screen of all of the scenes that are in there and that's grabbed at the point of the set opening and what that's given me is an indication of realistically what is going to be triggered if I clicked on any four, one of these four buttons here. We also have the selected queue um, we can change that but as you can see it's more likely that we change it in this regard awesome so in a moment we're going to plug in the the launch control to show you how to trigger these um, this is really just as a display so you can see how they come up uh, what we need to do if you notice from this clip name uh, we have got is name of two bar fa which stands for follow action and then alpha uh, which needs to have an e because that's the name of the scene alpha beta and carrot and if we put this on again, now what happens when we actually trigger this clip? Uh, let's go to session and we'll go down a bit. Oh, there we go. Across a bit. Uh, one, two, three, four. As you can see, alpha, belt, current, and none. So to update that basically, so we'll uh, stop for a second and let's go to here. Uh, we'll just show you that again. Follow action and we'll do Joker Ken Illworth. Now, if your C name, uh, for example, here had Champions Forever. Now, 
because of the way that Max works with text, we just need to put champions forever within uh, text things. <laughs> and as you can see, when we click that, Joker, Kenworth, champion, forever. ah, because I've added this after the point of the set being opened, it's not actually going to be one of the choices in here. So let's just reset the device. And now we have champions forever in there. So that should update. And we'll do so. Uh, at the moment, its name is 15 on the, on the, on the push to screen. So we'll just reopen that set. And basically, as the uh, set is loaded, those names will be configured and loaded into the live menus for you. Follow scene, dive in deeper, queue next. As you can see there, the champions forever. So you can do it in that manner and have things working out like that. Let's, uh, let's have a look at MIDI mapping the uh, Novation launch control. So I've chosen user one, a uh, very simple mode. Uh, and what I'm gonna do, control M, control, command M, and being the trigger buttons, I'm going to use them on the bottom. And then the eighth one I'm gonna use to trigger the highlighted scene, which matches how the, the push two worked. Okay, and so you can instantly see that I have lit up where I've got options. So if I trigger here, then I've got options one, two, or three, which I could read from the push to screen if I had both uh, plugged in and I didn't need one of the USBs for my mic. <coughs> and I can choose to go for carrot next, and carrot has nothing, so I've got no options there. So that's the push to, and that's the screen, and simple MIDI mapping. Of course, I can also, if you like, uh, MIDI map all of the, the different options here. So maybe the top row would give me my, again, previous, next, first, last. Ooh. Whoops, go back. Any, name, Q next. Ah, run out, okay. Need 10 buttons across the bottom there for a controller. Uh, as you can see, it has lit up to give me the indication. And if you've watched any of uh, the wonderful Bow Beats videos, you might consider actually putting a, uh, a strip across the top here from electrical tape and writing on what they actually are. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make uh, the second part of this video is effectively about clip envelopes. And my apologies if this is fairly basic, if you're an advanced Ableton Live user, but we have a number of requests from people saying, oh, how do I do the clip envelope ele element to it? And whilst it might seem easy to someone who's got a lot of experience, actually, the envelopes can be a, a complete mystery to someone starting for the first time. So the first thing I need to do is select follow scene five, and I'm going to go and choose the trigger type. Now the trigger type here, uh, the clip needs to be set to warp, and I should therefore have the envelope showing trigger type. There we go. So as long as there's a dot somewhere along the line, it will effectively pick that uh, command up. And when that clip is triggered, it will set to clip end. If you don't have a clip, it's a dotted line. And the easiest way I can think of this is if this clip plays, and let's say the line, ah, no, you can't. So it's ignored. So nothing in this clip is gonna change what you've set on the device. So if you think of what you click on on the device is the master, and you can change that by clip, by clip envelope. So let's change it to, oh, first on, first off. Let me get rid of that, I need to pick the master follow action and we'll change that to next okay so 
if you can see we're on first as soon as I launch the clip it goes to next launch the next one which has no clip envelope and it will revert back to what you chose basically by clicking so that's really quite simple you've got oh stop you've got the master follow action you can change the the trigger type and of course when you change the trigger type to say time like that then you're going to want to dial in the seconds as well and of course there's naught to 59 um, and let's have a look at that on the device so as you can see nothing happening and we move into time that's 29 seconds which gives me a little bit of time to remind you that as soon as the next one is triggered then effectively it's going to revert back to whatever you clicked on uh, with regards to the settings on the device. Clip end and next. Click end and time. Clip end next. So fairly simple there. Um, of course, if you wanted to, you could also go and show automation and jump straight to the automation in the clip and particularly for those of you that are using this as a click track rather than any audio you might consider doing the sort of stuff that i've done within here it's a two bar clip there's got an envelope which is relative plus four and then we want to also have the options of follow action firefox joker uh, and donut don't have to be in any particular order um, but as soon as I launch that, as you can see, we've got the three options here and we've also got an indication of what the follow action is going to be. Uh, and which one was it that I just put the time in? One of these. There we go. Uh, let's change that one to also have a master follow action change uh, we'll go to queue next so effectively you've got full midi feedback of what your follow action is along with your follow action choices that could come next thanks for watching